Hey, what's up everybody? Ben here from blogwithben.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a WordPress site locally on your computer and then push it to a live environment on a web host using this amazing new and free tool conveniently called Local. And if you're new to the concept, a local development environment or developing locally just means that you're hosting your website's files on your computer as opposed to a web host server. And if you're a WordPress site owner or a webmaster or even a web developer, then this video is for you because local gives you the ability to build, test, break, troubleshoot, and experiment with custom development on your WordPress site without having to worry about it affecting your live site. And since this site is local on your computer, you can literally do whatever you want to your local site before launching it on the web host for the world to see. And this free local WordPress development tool is a great way to get your feet wet with building local WordPress sites and learning some cool web development skills along the way. Plus, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use in this step-by-step -step tutorial. Now, real quick, before we get started, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad you found me. Here you're gonna find professional step-by-step -step video tutorials and reviews, right? Literally take you from start to finish and show you how to build, grow, and monetize your very own self-hosted WordPress blog or website. And if you find this video helpful, I would love it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Doing so helps me keep this channel going and growing, and it also allows you to stay up to date with all the videos that come out in the future. But either way, thanks for the support. I also encourage you to sign up for my new free ebook titled The Ultimate WP Engine Blog Roadmap. And this free guide is filled with a ton of tips, resources, step-by-step -step instructions, and videos aimed to help take the guesswork out of how to set up your site with WP Engine. So to get your free copy of this guide, just visit blogwithbin.com forward slash roadmap, fill out the form, and you'll have instant access to this free guide. And I'll put a link to this page in the video description below titled Free Ebook. All right, with that being said, let's start building a local WordPress website. So the first step in the process is you'll need to download local on your computer. And there are two things I wanna state before we get started. At the moment, local will only connect to WP Engine or Flywheel web hosting. If you're using another web host, that's great. You could still use local to build a local WordPress site but you won't be able to push that local site from local to your web host. Instead, you'll have to export your site from local and manually import those files to your desired web host. The process is super easy and we'll go over all this a little later on in the video, but I just wanted to point that out before we got too far along. Secondly, this video is a step-by-step -step tutorial for beginners. So if you're an experienced developer watching this, that's great, but just know that there are gonna be some steps in this video that may seem elementary to you but by all means, just skip over those steps and move at your own pace. Okay, so we wanna download and install local, and you'll do that from their homepage, which I've linked to in the video description below. And from here, simply click the download for free link, and that will begin the download process. Another roundabout way of getting here, if you already have a WP Engine web hosting account, from your user portal dashboard, within the sidebar menu on the left-hand side of the screen, click on add-ons, and this will bring you to your add-on management page. And from here, find a local and click the download button. This will bring you to the local homepage where you'll click the download for free link to download local on your computer, which I'll do right now. Okay, next there will be some onboarding steps. The first is to choose your platform. So from the drop-down menu, select the platform that you'll be using. And for this tutorial, I'm on my Mac, so I'll select Mac. Next, you'll be prompted to enter your name, email, and phone number. It says work email, but I don't think it really matters. Just enter the email that you want to associate with this account. And then once you've filled out all the fields, click the Get It Now button. And your download will begin. It should be fairly quick, only taking a few seconds. As you can see, it's almost done. There we go. Next, you'll want to install local on your computer. So find the file that you just downloaded. Again, I'm on my Mac, so my file will be a DMG file. Then open it, and then drag the local icon to your applications folder, like so. Then to open local, go to your applications. 
and then find the newly added application local. It should be listed there in alphabetical order. And there it is. And then go ahead and open it. And you may get a pop-up depending on your security settings. Yes, I'm sure I want to open it, so click open. Then go ahead and review their terms of service and check the box stating that you've read them and then click the I agree button. Next, there may be a few additional onboarding questions pertaining to error and usage reporting. You can always change these in your account preferences, but go ahead and select whether or not you want to turn these on. And now it's time to create your free local account. So click the create a free account button. And you have some options here. You can connect via Google, GitHub, or have local email you'll link, or you can sign up right here, which I'm gonna do. So fill out the fields, create your password, and click the create your account button. Then you'll need to verify your email address to finish setting up the account. So check your inbox of the email address you used to sign up with. And if you don't see it right away, just give it a few minutes or check your spam. Either way, the email will look something like this. And then within the email, just click the verify email address button. And in a few seconds, you'll be verified and taken to your brand new local account. Now you can tailor this account with a photo, preferred name and so on, but for the sake of time, I'm just leaving everything as is. All right, moving on next, let's actually open and use local to build a local WordPress website. In this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna actually use local and begin building a WordPress website locally on your computer. So to get started within your local account, click the open local button. And this will obviously open local where you can begin building a new site. Now for this tutorial, I'm building a brand new site within local and will then be moving it or pushing it to a live production environment within my WP Engine web hosting account. And just a quick refresher, by building a site on local, this means that it will live on your computer. You can test things, break stuff, really do whatever you want to your site because it isn't technically accessible by the outside world. However, once you're ready for your site to be live, you'll connect to WP Engine and push what you've built on local to your web hosting account. If you don't have WP Engine, no worries. You could still use local to build a local WordPress site on your computer, but instead of pushing it to WP Engine, you'll have to export the local site files and then import those files to your desired web host, which I'll walk you through a little later on in the video. If you're new to all this, I hope that wasn't too confusing, but either way, let's go through the process step-by-step step so you could see how easy it is to use. So to start building, click the Create a New Site button. Then you have two options. You can create a new site or create from what local calls a blueprint. The blueprints are a new feature that let you start a new site with pre-installed elements. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be creating a brand new site from scratch. However, whenever you have some extra time, I recommend checking out the blueprints feature. It can save you some time down the road if you're building multiple sites. Okay, so we're creating a new site, so go ahead and select that option and click the continue button. Next, you'll be asked to enter your site's name. So in the field provided, type the name of your site. Then there are some advanced options and clicking on that will give you the ability to configure the local site domain and site path. Remember, this domain and site path are only for your local site on your computer. You'll configure the real domain when you connect to a web host and launch the site. Either way, I'm leaving these as is, but you can always change them here if you'd like. All right, go ahead and click the continue button to move on. And next, you'll choose your environment. This consists of the version of PHP you'll be using, web server, and MySQL version. By default, local starts you with a preferred environment, but if you have a custom one you'd like to use for whatever reason, you can select custom. But I'm using the preferred environment, so I'll keep that option selected and click the continue button. Next, it's time to set up WordPress. This is where you'll create your username, password, and enter your email. This is the username and password you'll use to log into WordPress, so be sure to save these credentials somewhere offsite and somewhere safe. Then by default, Local uses a dev email address for your WordPress admin email that is hosted here within Local. But please know that this email address gets updated on the production side of things when you push this site live. Now, you can always swap this email out with whatever email you want to use right now, but I'm leaving the dev email in place. 
I'll also show you how to access this dev email inbox when you need to in just a few moments. Okay, then there's an advanced option. You have the option to create a multi-site. This is basically a type of WordPress installation that allows you to create and manage a network of multiple websites from one single WordPress dashboard. This lets you easily make changes and keep all of your websites updated from one place. But again, for this example, I'm only building one single WordPress site, so I'll leave this as no, and then click the Add Site button. And Local gets to work and begins installing the local version of WordPress. This may take a few seconds, so just sit tight really quick while it does its thing. And then depending on your platform and security settings, you may get a password prompt. My Mac is asking for my computer's login credentials in order to complete the installation, so I'll go ahead and do that and click OK. Then a few more seconds, and this should be done. And there we go. We now have a local installation, aka a local WordPress site that is hosted on my computer. And what you're looking at right now is your site dashboard. You can do a lot from here, but let me give you a quick tour before we move on. So this is basically like home base for your local site. If you look towards the left, you'll see a sidebar menu where you can manage and add new sites, connect to your web host, create blueprints, add add-ons, and get support. Then towards the right, you'll see your local sites listed. I only have one at the moment, but this is where you can easily access your local sites as you begin to create them. Then towards the bottom, starting on the left-hand side, you'll see the number of local sites running. Next to that, you could stop all sites if needed by clicking the red stop all. Next to that is showing you whether or not you have live link enabled. And live links allow you to give direct access to your local site to anyone online. Using live links is a great way to quickly share progress as well as gather feedback from your teammates or clients, all without needing to push the site to a remote server. Right now they aren't enabled, but you can enable live links in the tools section of this dashboard. And I'll show you how to do that in a few seconds. Then all the way towards the right, you can connect to your web host. And I'll definitely be showing you how to do that a little later on in the video as well. Okay, finally we have what I refer to as your local site dashboard. And this displays an overview of your site. You can access the database, use additional tools, log into WordPress, and open the front end of the site all from this dashboard. And speaking of that, you can access the database info by clicking here on database. And then the additional tools can be accessed by clicking on tools. And this is where you can enable live links by clicking here. Remember that's the feature we were just talking about. As well as access any email if you use the dev email address during the signup. All emails will go here to this mail hog inbox. Okay, so that's going to do it for the dashboard tour. Hopefully you have a better idea of where things are now. So let's move on. Next, let's log in to your local WordPress site and start building. In this portion of the tutorial, we're going to log into your WordPress dashboard and begin building your local site. So the first thing I want to point out is the domain and SSL for your local site. As you can see, the domain isn't your primary domain. This will be updated after you push the site to a web host in a production environment. Next is your SSL. Locally actually provides a free SSL certificate for your local site, which is awesome. And all you have to do is click that green trust link and enter your computer's login credentials and your local site will be trusted and this local domain should have a valid SSL certificate going forward. However, if you're having issues with the SSL displaying, there are some great help docs that can assist you with troubleshooting, and I'll put a link to this in the video description below. And I should point out that it would literally add 20 minutes to this tutorial if we went over all of the various situations that could come up with an SSL, but I highly recommend checking out Local's help doc on SSLs if you're having trouble getting it to show up on your local site. Local also has a great community where you can ask questions and get help along the way as well, so check that out. And finally, feel free to leave a comment on this YouTube video if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Either way, once your SSL is trusted, it's time to start building your local WordPress site. So from your local dashboard, simply click the WP Admin button, and this will take you to the back end of your site and is where you can begin building your WordPress website or blog. So first things first, you'll need to actually log into WordPress by entering the WordPress login credentials that you created during the site setup section of this video. And once you've entered the username and password, click the login button. 
And then as you can see, it's a fully functional WordPress install that looks and behaves just like a WordPress site that would be hosted on the servers of a web host. But since this is a local site, it's all on your computer. And really quick, if we visit the front end of the site, you can see that we have a fresh install with the default WordPress 2023 theme. And since this site is local, it means you can test things, break things, debug issues, troubleshoot, etc., all from here without worrying about it affecting your live site. For this example, I'm building a brand new site and will then be pushing it to a production environment on WP Engine. I'm not gonna go through the entire site build in this video, but if we go back to the WordPress dashboard really quick, and then let's say you wanna start adding plugins, and if we go to our installed plugins, you can see that you are initially starting from scratch. I love this because it really feels like you're in total control of the build. Plus, it doesn't matter what plugins you install. Remember, this site isn't technically live on the internet, so you won't have to worry about conflicts between plugins that could potentially break your site. This is why you have local, to test things before launching. And as you can see, the steps to build the site and add plugins and add a theme are the exact same as a live site. Everything on local behaves exactly like a live version of WordPress. So with that being said, I'm going to fast forward to the end of the site build because I'm not going to make you sit through hours of me setting this site up, but if you want some more in-depth tutorials on how to build a WordPress blog or website, I have a ton of free step-by-step -step videos that walk you through that process. Just swing by the Blog with Ben YouTube channel and check them out. Okay, so now that we have a completed site on our local environment, it's time to connect to our web host and push this site to a live production environment. In this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna connect local to our web host, which is WP Engine, and then push this site that I just built on local to WP Engine's production environment. This would effectively make the site live and open for web traffic on the internet. Now, if you're wondering about the SSL certificate and domain for this live site, that would all be taken care of in WP Engine. They have what is called a go live checklist that once you push this site to WP Engine, you would then go through the go live checklist and finish configuring things like the domain and SSL. And I have a video tutorial that walks you through the entire go live checklist too. You can access that on the Blog with Ben YouTube channel or visit the link in the video description below titled Go Live Checklist. Either way, once you're ready to push this local site to WP Engine, this is how you do that. So the first step in the process is connecting to the web host. And at the moment, local only supports WP Engine and Flywheel. I'm not aware of any other web hosts that support this, but that's not to say that they won't expand. But for now, you can only connect to those two web hosts. And if you don't have WP Engine web hosting, but you're using a different web host, then as I previously mentioned, instead of connecting to WP Engine, you'll simply export this local WordPress site's files and then import them to your desired web host, which we'll go over in a few moments. Now, if for any reason you don't have your web hosting yet, I highly recommend WP Engine. They're one of the fastest and most reliable web hosts out there for WordPress users. And if you're interested in learning more about WP Engine, I have a whole video review on WP Engine managed WordPress web hosting that you can check out on my YouTube channel or visit the link in the video description below titled WP Engine Review. I also have an affiliate link for their hosting that'll get you four months free on all annual plans. So if you haven't set up your web hosting yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link to do so. It's also in the video description below. Just visit blogwithbin.com forward slash WP Engine and you could save some money on your hosting. Okay, with that being said, let's connect to the web host. So within your local dashboard in the bottom right corner, click on where it says connect host. Then from here, you'll see your two options, WP Engine or Flywheel. For this video, I'm using WP Engine. So I'll click login. And next you'll be prompted to enter your WP Engine API credentials. Now, Local has some great help docs that walk you through the process that you can access here, but I'm gonna walk you through that whole process right now. So in order to generate your API credentials, you'll wanna head over to your WP Engine account. And then within your user portal dashboard, you'll wanna access your user profile. So in the upper right-hand side of the screen, click on your name and select profile from that dropdown. Then within the My Profile sidebar menu, select API Access. 
Then under the account API access section, it should be marked as disabled. So go ahead and click the manage button. And from here, you'll want to enable API access for your WP Engine account. So flip that switch on. And you should get a notification letting you know that API access was enabled. Next, it's time to generate the API credentials. This is what we'll use to connect local to WP Engine. So all you're going to do is within the generate credentials box, click the generate credentials link. And this takes you back to your user profile. Then towards the upper right, click on the Generate Credentials button. And just like that, we now have our API username and password. This is what you'll use to connect local to WP Engine. And please keep in mind that your API password will only be shown once and is not stored by WP Engine. So be sure to save it somewhere offsite, like a Google Doc or even write it down somewhere. Then to establish the API connection, all you're going to do is copy the username and password here by clicking these copy icons for each one. And then once you copy it, head back to local and paste the API username and password in the fields provided and click the connect to WP Engine button. All right, now that we've enabled the API connection to officially connect to WP Engine within your local dashboard towards the bottom right hand side of the screen, click on where it says connected to no host selected. And now that we've added the API credentials, you should be able to select and connect to WP Engine. So go ahead and click on select. And there we go. Local is now officially connected to WP Engine. Next, it's time to push this local site to a live environment hosted on WP Engine. The next step in the process is to push the local site to WP Engine. But in order to do that, you need to have an environment and site to push local to. This means that you'll need to set up a site first on the WP Engine side of things if you haven't done so already. So if we head back to my WP Engine account, you'll see that I have zero sites set up. So if you're pushing your local site to a brand new site, you'll want to add a new site on the WP Engine side of things. And let me do that right now. So I'm going to click the Add Now button. Then from here, this site is mine and I'm starting with a blank site. So I'll leave those two options selected. Don't worry about the pre-installed theme. Our local WordPress install will replace that one. Then go ahead and click the next button. And this is where you'll create your site and environment name, as well as determine the environment type. So in the site name field, type the name of your site. And as you do, you'll see the environment name being created as well. This is actually your site's temporary subdomain that you'll replace with your real domain during the go live process of launching your WP Engine site. Then after you enter the site and environment names, you'll need to select the environment type. WP Engine offers development, staging, and production environments. So choose the one that best suits your needs. I'm leaving it as production. And for anyone who is new to this, your production environment is live, meaning web traffic will be able to access it. Staging and development are sandboxes meant for developing and troubleshooting issues. But since we have local, we can just bypass that and push this to a live production environment. So I'll leave production selected. Then we're all set here. So click the add site button. and the new production environment in site have been added. Now, WP Engine is in the process of installing WordPress for this new site, but just give it a few minutes. Remember, our local site will be replacing this site. We just created the site here on WP Engine so that our local site had somewhere to live. So with that being said, let's head back to local. And now it's time to push this local site to WP Engine. So towards the bottom right hand side of your local dashboard, you'll see two cloud icons. And to push to WP Engine, Click on the one towards the very right. Then you'll be asked to select a WP Engine site to push the local site to. This is why we just set up the site in WP Engine. So where it says push site to, select the site that you want to move the local site to. And there's the local stay site that I just created on WP Engine, so I'll select that. Then you'll need to select the environment. So from the drop down, I'll select my production environment. 
Then local gets to work and it starts determining the file list. And again, depending on the size of the site that you're pushing live, this may take a few moments. So just sit tight really quick. Next, you have the option of not including the database, but I wanna move everything over. So if you plan on replacing the entire database with your one from local, just check that box and then we're good to go. So to push this site to WP Engine, click the push to WP Engine button and the process begins. Then depending on the size of your site and how many files there are, this process may take a few minutes. So just sit tight and let it do its thing. But for the sake of time, I'm actually gonna fast forward through this so you're not having to sit here watching my site load. And voila, once your site has been pushed, you should get a notification letting you know that it was a success. And you even get this little timer towards the bottom of the local dashboard, letting you know how long it's been since your last push to production. Pretty cool. Now let's head back to WP Engine. And when I refresh this page, we should see the environment name and subdomain listed. And remember, this subdomain is just temporary. You'll need to add and point your new domain to this account in order for it to work with this site. This is all handled in the Go Live checklist video that you can access in the video description below. But either way, our local site that was hosted on my computer should now be accessible on WP Engine. So if we log into WordPress by clicking the WP Admin button, our local site should be what comes up. And since this is my first time accessing this version of WordPress, it may take a few seconds to load, so just sit tight really quick. And there we go, so far so good. Then let's check out the front end of our site. And boom, the local site has been successfully pushed to my WP Engine account and everything I built in local has now been transferred to this WP Engine live production environment. Now, if for any reason you notice that something is missing after you've pushed this site to WP Engine, like maybe the images aren't displaying, I recommend pushing the site from local again. And you can do that within the local dashboard. Just click this cloud icon again and the steps would be the exact same. You're essentially just pushing the site and database to WP Engine again. All right, the last thing I wanna go over in this video is show you how to migrate this local site to a web host that isn't WP Engine or Flywheel. You may have clients that use different web hosts or maybe you use a different web host for your sites, but either way, if you don't use WP Engine or Flywheel, you can still move your local WordPress site to a new host. There are just a few additional steps that you need to take. Okay, in this final portion of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to migrate this local site to a web host that isn't WP Engine. So instead of pushing this local site to WP Engine, we'll manually import it via a plugin, and it's super easy to do. So first things first, let's log into our local WordPress site. So from the local dashboard, click the WP Admin button. Then as I previously mentioned, we're gonna use a plugin to handle the migration process. So to add a new plugin within your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over plugins and click on add new. Then within the search field, type the word migrate. And the plugin we want is called the all-in-one WP migration plugin. This is probably one of the best migration plugins out there and it works seamlessly with local. So go ahead and install and activate this plugin on your local site. And there we go. Next, you'll wanna install and activate the same plugin on the WordPress site that you wanna to migrate to. So let me head over to that site really quick. Then as you can see, I've already begun to build this site on a different web host, but I wanna replace this site with my local WordPress site. So simply follow the same steps to install and activate the all-in-one WP migration plugin. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna speed through these steps to install the plugin because we just went through them. But once you've installed and activated the plugin on both sites, this is how you'd facilitate the site migration to the new web host. So head back to your local WordPress site. And from here, we're going to export this site from local and then import it to the new site hosted on our different web host. So within the WordPress dashboard of your local site, hover your mouse over all-in-one WP migration and click on export.
Then if you don't see the find and replace fields right away, simply click this arrow and they should appear. Then all you're gonna do here is within the find field, enter the domain of your local site, and then within the replace with field, enter the domain of the site you're migrating to. So let me do that really quick. And one thing I wanna point out is that whenever I pasted my domain from my local site in the find field, it added the HTTP prefix and a trailing slash at the end of the domain, but you'll wanna remove those so that you just see the domain like so. Then in the replace with field, you're going to enter the domain of the site you wanna to migrate to. So for this example, I'm moving it to a subdomain that's hosted on Bluehost, but again, just enter the domain of your site. No need to add the HTTP or HTTPS prefix or the trailing slash at the end, just the domain. Next, it's time to export this site file. So click on the green Export To button and select File from that drop-down menu. Then it may take a few seconds to prepare the export. And when it's ready, go ahead and click the blinking download button. And this will begin the download. And within a few seconds, you should have the site files on your computer. And there they are. Then let's close this out really quick. And now that we've exported our local sites files, it's time to migrate and import them to our new web host. So I'm gonna head over to the site that I wanna to migrate to. Again, this site isn't hosted on WP Engine. It's a completely different web host, but now that we have installed and activated the all-in-one WP Migration plugin, we can import our local site with a few clicks of the mouse. So first things first, let's head to the WordPress dashboard. And then this time we're importing the site. So hover your mouse over all-in-one WP migration and click on import. Then you can either drag and drop the file that we just downloaded here or click the green import from button and select file from the dropdown. Then find the local site file you just exported. It'll be a WPress file and should look something like this. And let's go ahead and open it. And the import will begin. Now, depending on the size of your site, the length of time that this takes may vary, but I'm not gonna make you sit through this, so I'm gonna fast forward to the end of the import. And once it's done, you'll get a notification letting you know that the import process will overwrite the current website, obviously. So if you need to, I recommend making a backup, which you can do here within the all-in-one WP Migration plugin. It's kind of hard to see right now because the screen is dark, but you can create a backup of your site's files here. However, for this example, I'm moving forward without a backup. So go ahead and click the Proceed button. And in a few seconds, you should get another notification letting you know that the import was a success. Now, there will be two additional steps to complete before the import is finished, which are save your permalink structure and review the plugin. Now, you only really need to do the first one, which is to save the permalink structure. The review isn't required, but I'm sure they appreciate it. Either way, you do need to save the permalink structure. So click on that link and it'll take you to your permalink settings, where all you're gonna do is click the save button. And once your permalink settings have been successfully saved, your migration is complete. And then if we visit the site really quick, you can see that the site we built on local has overwritten the site that was originally hosted here. And the combination of local and the all-in-one WP migration plugin has sped up the workflow a ton. And if you're migrating a site from local to a different web host other than WP Engine or Flywheel, this is a must have. I absolutely love how easy it is. All right, so hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. I gotta say that when I first discovered local, I was a bit skeptical because I didn't think it could be this easy, but local and WP Engine have definitely streamlined a lot of the development process and made these tasks super simple. I'm a huge fan of local now and will definitely be using it to test and build my future WordPress websites and blogs. 
So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. Also, now that you've started your blog, check out these two videos on email marketing and blog monetization. They'll help you grow your audience and earn a passive income with your blog. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.